this out. On September 17, 1787, a group of men in Philadelphia signed a document that set the course for American politics and still impacts. Literally one of the worst cities for this reason, along with many others. Daily life in the U.S. more than 230 years later. The U.S. Constitution. The first of its kind and the longest lasting constitution in the world. Even today, your health, your safety, even your perception of time, they're all impacted by this centuries-old document. It's perhaps the main reason the U.S. remains stuck on so many important issues. Thank you all, Zagreus, for the 10 gifted subs. Issues. And while the longevity and near holy reputation of the U.S. Constitution leads many to believe it either can't be changed or shouldn't be changed, it can be. So buckle your shoes and powder your wigs as we examine how the Constitution blocks the U.S. from becoming a thriving multiracial democracy and explore what it will take to change it. The U.S. constitutional system establishes a fundamentally undemocratic order. Do you ever look around and wonder how life in the U.S. got so desperate? There's an 18th century constitution that is really mal-equipped to solve 21st century problems. What makes the constitution profoundly flawed? is that it doesn't reflect the current needs and values of this country and its people. That's great, you say, but if the Constitution is so broken, show me a concrete example. These are three of the most fundamental anti-democratic pieces of the Constitution. The Electoral College makes it so the president can be elected without winning the popular vote. In fact, two of the last four presidents received fewer votes than their opponents. And the Senate? Well. It's just so wild that, like, um, a document that was, like, put together by a bunch of fucking, again, rapists, pedophiles, slavers, ends up routinely benefiting uh, the minoritarian rule of the reactionary party. The more reactionary party, rather. It's just so strange that, like, oh, the, the, the way that they intended to fucking structure American society at a time where they didn't think black people were fucking humans, they didn't think women were humans, uh, ends up uh, manifesting a reality where the party that literally fucking feels that way, maybe not as openly, but still uh, feels as closely to that idea as possible, keeps winning regardless of not winning elections. The Senate's whole existence is based on circumventing democracy. It gives equal representation to each state regardless of population. Back in Philly, this idea passed by only a one-vote margin. So you could say the Senate was controversial even back then, and maybe not well thought out. See, the men in that room back in Philly could never have dreamed of the vast population differences that states would have in the 21st century. Today, two senators from states like Wyoming or South Dakota have the same power as the two senators from California. And a senator chosen by a few hundred thousand voters can block the agenda of a president chosen by tens of millions. See where we're going with this? Supreme Court justices are nominated by the president, confirmed by the Senate, and then serve for life. Meaning the U.S. can have a president who didn't win a Democratic majority, nominating the most powerful judges in the country, who are then confirmed by senators whose power is constitutionally designed to undermine majority power. And it's these same judges who ultimately interpret the Constitution. You can do a lot of violence with the text of the Constitution, given its history, given its modern evolution, and given the limited rights that people now enjoy under the Constitution because of its narrow interpretation by the Supreme Court. So to recap, <laughs> the men in that room back in Philly laid a path for a minority political party to sack the most powerful court in the country and wield generation-changing power. And they can do all of this without having to win a national...
Democrats are throwing woes. We can't, we can't do anything because we need 60. Republicans are 41. We run this motherfucker. No popular sure. vote or even respond to the actual demands of American voters. All of this facilitates minority rule. As bad as this sounds, the Constitution is doing exactly what it was designed to do. Because at its core, the Constitution is all about power, dictating who gets to wield it and how. See, those men in Philly were wealthy, white, and deeply suspicious of the power everyday people might wield in elections. After all, workers and laborers vastly outnumbered them. So they wrote the- That's why America's the most cuck nation, dude. That resentment towards uh, a proletarian uprising, a proletarian, dem uh, a, a proletarian dictatorship, was baked into our very foundation on top of, obviously, white supremacy and, and slavery and all that sort of good stuff, you know? Which is precisely why all of the fucking biggest dick riders of the Constitution and the Founding Fathers also happen to be the biggest cucks and fucking losers who personally think they're going to run society eventually, which is why they should... Which is why, you know, the tyranny of majority uh, or the tyranny of minority must stand. Meet prison, thank you for the 10 gift of subs. Also, Wall Zagreus, thank you for the 10 gift of subs as well the constitution in a way that consolidated power for men like them and away from true popular democratic rule here's a great example he's rich what about the mob rule meme dude that's the perfect example what do you mean mob rule man that's called democracy you understand that americans are so fucking cucked from the jump that rich white landowning slavers decided that democracy is mob rule because the opposite of the tyranny of minor uh, tyranny of majority is the tyranny of minority, which is exactly what we fucking live under currently. I love that, dude. I love when people say, "Oh, what about mob rule? Mo what about mob rule?" I love how like surfed up motherfuckers are. You know what I mean? Like that's just peasant brain, dog. You just you literally have a terminal case of peasant brain, and it's actually disrespectful to say that because like peasants have done plenty of fucking successful uprisings worldwide. In areas where there are there is revolutionary potential, except for in America, because our peasants are fat as fuck and are not even a productive force, but rather a consuming one. And white and lost the popular vote by millions. Yet he was able to stack the court with conservative justices, thanks to a Republican controlled. How do you counter when they say the majority used to be racist, though? It was not the majority that was fucking racist, and it doesn't even matter. The majority won the Civil War. That's it. That would have not happened. That's it. The majority won the suck. The, the majority won the Civil War. Old Senate that represented a minority of voters. The minoritarian dimensions of the constitutional system incentivizes one of the two major parties, the Republican Party, to see its strength as tied to these counter-majoritarian instruments, and to then view the actual emergence of a multiracial democracy in the U.S. as an almost existential threat. Which is why Republicans continue blocking legislation aimed at increasing access to the ballot, and why the U.S. faces one democratic crisis after another. For example, if abortion access were put to a popular vote in the U.S., it would win by a landslide. Same goes for background checks on guns, voting rights, environmental protections, yeeting our current healthcare system <clears throat> into the sun, and a host of other modern issues. Yet these things remain stalled and Americans' lives remain desperate. And it all goes back to what? The Constitution rooted in slavery, rooted in exclusion, excluding women, excluding- It's just like so wild that we kind of brush past that. And by we, I mean, like, mostly... I mean, even some black people brush past that, too. When you see, like, a black dude wearing a 1776 shirt, you're like, what the fuck is going on? Like, how do you ride for 1776, bro? They were literally riding you. Um, but it's just, for the most part, it's, like, overwhelmingly white people that fucking uh, completely brush past that shit, where they're just like, yeah, whatever. It was, like, slavers. Yeah, they came up with it. It was just the norm at the time. It's like, no, nah, not really. I don't think we should just let that go. I think that's kind of fucking wild that that like that was the that was uh, the 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 motivating principle of a lot of these motherfuckers. Like the idea that there was like robust debate is so silly.
You know what I mean? I'm just trying to pick up a Trump muscle mommy, let me live. <laughs> anyone who did not own property, excluding anyone who's not a man. This is real. Rarely, if ever, have women or people of color had any meaningful say in how the Constitution is written or fixed. It's a document that, at its core, is written by white men who wanted to build themselves a country on land violently taken from Native people. The U.S. Constitution is not just pro-slavery. It also was built through a project of settler colonialism. So if Americans wanted to redraft the- It's wild that this is called CRT, by the way. Like, this is- Learning about this is considered bad. And that in the state of Texas, teachers are not even allowed to say that that, like these values, if they're even able to get to it, are bad values. Remember, that was a, that was a state legislature bill that passed in, in Texas. Texas state passed the bill saying this, including the KKK, you cannot have a moral, uh, you know, you cannot give any kind of like normative, uh, uh, ascribe normative values to this. Their constitution to make it more representative of today's values and demographics, what would they have to do? As good citizens, we must be quick to use the tools our Constitution gives us and repair any cracks that may appear. Thomas Jefferson, seen here on the easily forgotten $2 bill, is one of the most famous founding fathers. He believed the Constitution would last less than two decades because each generation should interpret the Constitution for itself. He actually wrote, no society can make a perpetual Constitution or even a perpetual law. Today, that same constitution theoretically can be changed. It's just- It's not allowed. Don't think about that too hard. Very difficult. Uh, Don't think about that too hard, brother. That doesn't count. Article 5, which provides for amending the constitution, shows that the men who wrote it- Republicans be like, oh, hold on. I don't want to listen to a rapist pedophile's uh, words on this one. He was a slaver, sir. How dare you? How dare you, sir? Uh, can we do some standpoint theory right now? Are you fucking kidding me? Expected it to change. The Constitution absolutely can be formally changed. There are about 200 constitutions around the world. The U.S. is the oldest. It's probably the most difficult to amend. This difficulty is a big reason why life in the- Yeah, I love that people act like it's a flex. Like, oh man, we have the longest running constitution. Like, oh, sick, bro. Don't you feel like that's a problem? The U.S. can feel like running. No, Germans or POC wasn't Thomas Jefferson. That was Benjamin Franklin. Oh, Benny boy. On a hamster wheel, facing the same battles around guns and abortion and countless other issues and not getting anywhere. Meanwhile, other countries are making real progress. You don't look to the U.S. as a model of what to put in your constitution. You look to other countries that protect newer forms of rights especially social jabuki says supreme court reverses roe v wade democrat emails it's the lack of rights for me period use code rbg for 20 percent off vote blue merch and economic rights like the right to health care that's in constitutions around the world today the right to a job that's in constitutions around the world today the right to a clean environment that's in constitutions of the world today none of those three appears in the text of the u.s constitution Think of the U.S. Constitution debuting in 1787 like a new car rolling out of the dealership. At the time, no one... Let me, let me just stop you right there. That shit was a lemon, okay? It was already... It was a lemon. It was already broken from the jump. ...had ever seen anything like it. It was shiny and full of promise. But it was kind of a lemon. Almost immediately... Pre-wash, baby! ...massive repairs to keep it running... Over the years, it's needed maintenance, like an amendment here and there to keep the country going, and some major repairs during Reconstruction. But overall, not many repairs have been possible. There have been over 12,000... I love that. 13th Amendment, abolish slavery except in prisons. 14th Amendment, citizenship to formerly enslaved people. 15th Amendment, right to vote cannot be denied based on race. But overall, not many repairs have been possible. There have been over 12,000 proposals to amend the U.S. Constitution in Congress. And of those, only 27 have made it through the labyrinth of constitutional amendment. And remember, 10 of those amendments were immediate. 
So in the 230 years or so since it was written, the Constitution has only been amended 17 times. Congress approved the 19th Amendment. Nothing to see here, boys. That doesn't seem weird. Amendment, which provided for the voting rights of women. The last time the Constitution was amended was more than 30 years ago, in 1992. And that was kind of a quirk. Before that, it had last been amended when the 26th Amendment expanded voting rights in the 1970s to all Americans over 18. Which means it's been more than 50 years since a meaningful addition has been made. Brother, we need a DLC desperately for this Constitution shit, okay? It's a dead game. Nobody's playing it. Nobody's watching it on fucking Twitch. They've not done any patches. They're still sitting on. They're still sitting on the the, the laurels of the of the original fucking constitution. The original the original constitution and like how popular people uh, thought it was at the time. Okay. Made to the Constitution. You could say the U.S. is part of the Check Engine Light Club, based solely on numbers, not to mention Thomas Jefferson. You could argue the Constitution is way past due for some repairs. The average Constitution in the world is 19 years old. They're replaced every 20 years or so. Not this one. Some yeah, well, those countries, well, uh, sir, I know you're a constitutional uh, law professor, constitutional history professor. But have you ever considered that those other countries' constitutions are gay? That's right. Fucking owned, dude. Absolutely destroyed. Some would say, scrap it and just get a new car. Because fixing this car is- That's right, brother! Ours is so sick! We never turned it around. We never changed it. Extremely difficult. Article 5 of the U.S. Constitution tells us there are two ways to amend the Constitution. First, you can call a constitutional convention do the very same thing that led to the creation of the U.S. Constitution in 1787. Oh, fuck. We got four more. God damn it. Sorry, boys, girls, MBs. June 26th, I thought Pride Month was over. You know, I was excited. That's never been tried before. The other way to amend the Constitution. Constitutional convention, by the way, is what Jank tried to do with Wolfpack. Difficult. Article 5 of the U.S. Constitution tells us there are two ways to amend the Constitution. First, you can call a constitutional convention do the very same thing that led to the creation of the U.S. Constitution in 1787. That's never been tried before. The other way to amend the Constitution requires two-thirds of the Congress to approve an amendment, and then 38 out of 50 states have to approve that amendment. That's a high bar. It's a very, very high bar. So, considering the U.S. Constitution can change, but is mad difficult to change, what should Americans do? Well, listening to American news would have you thinking that Americans are hyper-partisan. But if you look at the numbers, that simply isn't the case. Yep. Americans generally agree- Americans are not hyper-partisan. They just, like, there are a lot of these wedge issues where they just, like, almost universally agree on, right? But the problem is- like, nobody really fucking cares because, like, everyone is checked out because the system is designed in a way to make people feel like they have no power because they don't have any fucking power. So, ultimately, like, people can do whatever the fuck they want, and one party will will uh, substitute their, their uh, horrific policy provisions to the next one. Like, Republicans will come in, fuck shit up. Every four years, or every eight years, usually, Democrats will be like, okay, shit's really fucked up, it's our turn now. And then Democrats don't do anything to fix it. And then Republicans come back again and fuck shit up again. And Democrats literally, when they're in power, can't do anything to actually change or reverse some of the cruelty that the Republicans left in place. And then Republicans come back and fuck shit up again. And then the Democrats are like, oh, look at how fucked up they are. Please give us some power again, please. And it's just like, you know, a slow, uh, slow creep towards uh, just fascism. Day in and day out. Agree on also big, known as yes the ratchet effect big issues so now that we understand that the constitution intentionally creates a power imbalance what would it take for americans to make meaningful changes to their constitution the recipe to amend the u.s constitution requires more than just looking at the text of article 5. you need a social movement that builds up from below or you need a charismatic leader that leads from above the main changes that need to be pursued now are really changes that would enhance 
the power that the most marginalized have in this society. In order for the Constitution to change today, the country needs a mass movement on behalf of insurgent democracy. The world doesn't look to the U.S. Constitution as a model anymore. It's old. It's outdated. It's ancient. It actually holds back the possibilities for humanity to have a Constitution that looks like the U.S. Constitution's limited protections for rights and freedoms. That was pretty good. That was a really good video. Shouts out to fucking Al Jazeera doing, doing great work once again. Oh.